just you two. Oh, love it. Love it. Uh, thanks. Uh, so good to be out here. How's everyone? Just to clarify, this is just a really ugly shirt. This is not my skin. Uh, someone had mentioned that earlier. Like, I thought that was your skin just showing, and this was a very short blue shirt. No, it is a full shirt. So for the, the kids in the audience, I am... I'm appropriately clothed. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is so good to have everyone here. I know that there are so many things you could do on a Saturday night, but you chose to be here, so give yourselves a pat on the back. Woo! Yes, oh, and a bonus woo for yourselves. That's so good. All right, um, something I like to do when I'm uh, running the show here is I want to know who thinks they came from the farthest place to be here tonight. Oh my gosh, a gasp. Uh, okay, was that an oh my gosh because you think you got it? Or that would be you? It might be. Where are you from? Ohio. You flew from Ohio to come to this show? To see my beautiful daughters. Okay, so not quite just this show. I was like, you are a super fan. You, you are always welcome here for free. Um, so you guys think. Uh, not Ohio. No, almost to Idaho. Tremont. Tremont. Yeah. Did you also come to see her daughters? We're state swimming. State swimming. Okay, very cool. How often do you come from Ohio? Uh, second time. This is my second time. Second time. Are you going to come back a third time? I am, in April for graduation. Okay, tell you what. Come talk to me afterwards. I'll give you two free tickets to come back. Okay? <laughs> Wow! And you guys are tree Yeah. Okay, so there's two free tickets right here. All right, who feels they traveled the least to get here? What's your address? You live right here? Not in Boston, but you're parking right across the street. Okay, smart. Okay, does anyone anyone think they can beat that? <laughs> okay, so wait. Ge geographically, are you closer to the theater? Oh, man. Okay. Well, 10 feet got you ten, two tickets. Very cool. Plus, you get to come with your mom when she comes from Ohio anyways. Yeah. All right. Very good. Okay. <laughs> This is kind of what our show is. I just ask questions, I give tickets to come to free shows where I just ask you questions and give more free tickets. That's all it is. There is no comedy, there is no singing. It's just this. Uh, that is a joke. Uh, we will do comedy, we will do singing, and we will play some games. Uh, for, uh, just for my reference here, how many of you this is your very first time here at Improv Broadway? Go ahead. Okay, we got a good number of hands. Give me a, I can't really see in the back, so give me an audible. Okay, very good. So that means the rest of you have been here before. You're, uh, okay. So very good. Um, at the, if you are sitting next to someone that has not been here before, so go ahead and raise your hands, those of you that have not been here before. If you're sitting, uh, so those of you that have been, um, turn to someone and tell them what they are going to be seeing here tonight. That's it, it's just improv. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> As I can only deduce from the mumbling. <laughs> I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> so yes, we're gonna be performing things for you that we have not rehearsed, written down, or pre-planned. We are just going to be getting suggestions from you guys and uh, creating musical, uh, uh, improvised uh, songs, games, scenes. And then the second half of our show is kind of what makes Improv Broadway unique here in Utah, is we do a fully improvised musical, uh, like you'd see on Broadway, only we make it up and we are not really good at dancing. So, um, but we do have a professional pianist that will be playing uh, for us. And I said pianist, someone who plays on the piano. <coughs> so, um, as I said, I'm going to be coming to you for suggestions. So I need you guys to practice. We're going to warm up. Uh, this side over here, I just want you to, um, let's see, uh, shout out something that you would not ever want to have on a sandwich. Anchovies. Anchovies, pineapple. Antonio? Yeah. 
smart. <laughs> okay, so no pineapple anchovies or Antonio. All right, um, you, you guys over here, what is a place you would love to go on vacation? Florida? Florida? Florida. Hawaii? Hawaii? Europe. North America. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Young man, I hope you get there someday. <laughs> I sincerely hope you get there. Um, from over here, just give me, uh, just shout out your job role. What is your job role? Insurance. Insurance. Engineer. Engineer. Retailer. Bank teller and a professional tourist. Okay, very good. All right, over here, um, give me a show that is totally binge worthy. Family Guy? Peppa Pig. <laughs> 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 That is the acceptable answer, yes. Bluey is bingeable. Peppa Pig is bingeable if you no longer want to live. Uh, Peppa Pig is terrible. Um, so make better decisions. Very good, so just like that, I'm gonna come to you with some questions, you guys shout some stuff, and then we'll, we'll come up with some fun stuff. Sound good? Okay. All right, thank you. What's your name? Michael. Michael. What country are you from? <laughs> North America. He made it. Yes. Very good. Cool, Michael. All right. With that, let's get, let's get our performers out here. Um, we cue them. They know that they are almost set to come out. They're in the very back. Um, behind a very thick wooden door, and we need to let them know that it's time to come out, and we let them know that by cheering uh, as loud as you can. Okay, so we're gonna do that on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, so very good. If you listen very quietly, you might hear the door open, but maybe not. Um, so that's their cute and... Ooh, you guys hear that? It's very fun. Okay, so now, in order to cue them to come out, because they, they're not, they're not out of here. They, they're, they're back there, so we need to let them know it's time to come out. And we do that with a round of applause, but we're gonna work up to it, okay? Um, I'm gonna start over here. This is our, imagine this is a giant uh, applause meter. When I get to that side of the stage, it is, uh, it is what you guys did, but times three. Okay, so you guys were very loud. You brought a lot of volume, but how can we bring more energy to that? Okay. Uh, oh, Michael. Yeah, dude. Oh, indeed. Um, this country's great. Okay, so what, is it, what does that look like when I say we need more energy? Um, I want to know, what are the things that get you guys excited? Someone uh, over here, uh, give me your celebrity crush. Oh, Eddie Redmayne. Ooh, Eddie Redmayne, okay. So, uh, Newt Scamander, right? Yeah. Or uh, Mar Mar Marius. How do you? Yeah. I'm not French. <laughs> Marius, cool. All right, so we got Eddie Redmayne over here. Uh, something over here, something that gets you guys super excited. Um, give me your favorite sports team. The Dodgers. The Dodgers, okay. Awesome, uh, and then you, uh, let's see, oh, I got, to, I got a person over here. Um, let's see, oh, a, a life, someone give me a life event that happens like once, maybe twice. Birth. Birth. <laughs> Birth. <laughs> maybe twice. <laughs> They're coming, no? <laughs> yes, twice. <laughs> okay, we got birth. And then um, over here, a uh, concert you would love to attend. Journey. Okay, very good. So we had Journey, um, and then we had... Uh, <laughs> yeah, we got Eddie Redmayne, we had Journey, uh, Dodgers, and... Uh, and Bird. <laughs> so let me explain to you when I... Because these are, these are all things that get you guys very excited. <laughs> so this is the energy we're going to be channeling. 
So when I get to this end of the stage, I want you to just close your eyes and imagine this. You are at a Journey concert. No, 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 you're at a Dodgers game. And during the, is there a halftime equivalent in baseball? Seventh inning stretch, okay. So you're at a Dodgers game, they're doing very well. In the seventh inning stretch, they say, Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special treat for you tonight. If you want to take a look down at the pitcher's mound, Journey will be playing. That's very exciting. Very, very exciting. Um, <coughs> and then at the crescendo when they're singing, don't stop believing, what happens is like the drummer just starts hitting that bass drum as hard as he can. And then as if it is birthing, <laughs> the bass drum opens up and who crowns but Eddie Redmayne <laughs> himself. He takes the mic from Stephen uh, Perry, uh, bless him, and he completes Don't Stop Believing and melds it into empty chairs and empty tables. That is the, when you are witnessing this, think of all that energy that you felt as I was describing this. That is the energy that we should be feeling when I get to this end of the stage. You got it? Okay, here we go. We're going to start over here. energetic and most insane situation uh, I've ever shared with a group of 200 people. That was very fun. Uh, let me introduce to you the cast for this evening. To my immediate right, we have Sammy James Wright. <laughs> Wearing the only denim jacket in the cast tonight is Zach Atherton. via live stream, this is the person you came for, Shane McCombs! <laughs> and tickling the Irish for tonight is Calvin Barry! <laughs> Very good. Ah. <laughs> now, if <laughs> imagining Eddie Redmayne coming out of a bass drum wasn't bad enough. We are going to play a game called Cringe. Um, <laughs> all the Gen Zers are like, oh man! And then, and then the boomers are like, what's that mean? Is that some kind of spring? Okay, very fun. Okay, so the way that Cringe works is we're gonna be seeing a scene and uh, that our performers are gonna be, that are, they're gonna be putting on. And at any point, I'm, I can say cringe, and the last line they said, they'll have to make it a little bit more cringy, okay? Um, and, I, and they'll continue to have to make it cringy so long as I am telling them to make it, so. Um, and then we'll just continue to move on when I feel that they have, uh, when they've done something that is adequate. So, <laughs> um, we need a suggestion to get this scene started. So someone give me a relationship that is not uh, f familial. It's not like part of a family. Delivery man. D delivery man and? A student teacher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A the classic pairing. Yeah. Classic relationship, a delivery man and a student teacher. <laughs> right. Very good. Uh, whenever you guys are ready, take it away. All right, where do you want these uh, textbooks? Oh, just uh, right there in the cubbies would be all great. Right. Oh, okay, just gonna make me unpack it myself, all right. Cringe. Just gonna make me unpack it all by myself. 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm a teacher, not a delivery person. They don't teach us that at no? teaching school. <laughs> Cringe, Zach. I don't want. <laughs> All right, fine, you twisted my arm, I'll do it myself. Oh, thank you so much. It's just, you know, it's tiring teaching these kids day in and day out. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. I feel like I don't understand anything that they're saying. Zach, yeah. cringe. They got the gut with the ribs. <laughs> cringe. Because they're lit fammy with the dumpy. <laughs> Always playing Minecraft. Always doing Fortnite. Always live streaming on Twitch. You know the ones. I do, you know, I have a daughter that age. She is a handful, that's why I'm trying to spend more time with her. She's actually on delivery with me right now. Cringe. I need you, when my daughter comes in, to tell her that I am doing a good job. <laughs> I'm just happy she's talking to me. Oh my gosh, Sheila from my class. Uh, and a uh, teacher from my class. Yes. Your father is doing a wonderful job. Cringe. Your poppy is potty. Cringe. Can I be your new mom? No. one job only, and that's to raise a spectacular girl! Cringe! Uh, who can say where the day goes? With the day goes, with the time. All of my money goes into voice lessons for this angel. Some say love. Keep going, baby. I learned that from Wait. Napoleon Dynamite. I should be filming this. Keep going, baby. <laughs> boomy, 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 chick, boom. Hey, all my fam. <laughs> Here's your boy, Dean Nizzle, with his daughter, the girl I helped father. Smash that ball. <laughs> okay, see? <laughs> <laughs> and the comments will let us know if we cringed uh, or not. Yeah. What a way to kick off a fun night. Like, hey, let's make people uncomfortable. <laughs> That's very fun. Uh, we're going to play a game that uh, is pretty new here. It's one called Anthems. Uh, and I need to know, uh, oh, let's see. We had Ohio, right? Yeah. Um, let's see, anyone else from out of state? Where are, you, where are you from? Arizona. Arizona, okay. Um, let's see, what's your name? Xavier. Xavier, with an X? Yes, sir. Nice. Okay. Uh, so, Xavier, I, I just want to get to know you a little bit, and then we're going to sing basically the anthem of your life. You're going to feel, you're going to hear a couple of anthems that should describe your life. Right. Sound good? Okay, so you grew up in Arizona. <laughs> You're a pathological liar. Uh, okay, so you are just living there? Yes. Okay, so you are currently in Arizona. Okay, Arizona. Aren't we all? <laughs> right. In spirit. Okay, uh, next, so Xavier, in high school, was there a specific clique you were a part of? <laughs> Football team, okay, so more of a jock then. Cool. <laughs> All right, um, outside of football, uh, and this was maybe even outside of high school because people are very different outside of high school, what is one of your hobbies? Um, camping. Camping. Yes. Okay, very good. So uh, we're, <coughs> we're, we're going to get all three at the same time. We're not going to mount. Three at the same time? 
Well, we'll what? start with one. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. We'll start with uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to these guys, and they're going to pitch an idea for the anthem to Arizona, right? And then we'll get an anthem for jocks and then an anthem for uh, camping. So uh, I want to hear Arizona. What, what song do you feel encompasses that could be an anthem for Arizona? Zach? Satan's Playground. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven for oldies. <laughs> Get in the zone. Uh. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so I, I love Satan's Playground, so we're going go, to go with Satan's Playground. So let's hear the anthem of Arizona. spring day it makes old lucifer say hey everybody come out and play and crack an egg on the sidewalk for the first meal of the day we're arizona we don't care about your sweat we're arizona time to make a bet on your soul and if i win then you will burn here it's a thousand degrees, nine months out of the year. It's Arizona. <laughs> Very good. Okay, spot on? Spot on. Very good. <laughs> All right, uh, the next thing we need to uh, come up with uh, for Xavier is an anthem for the jocks in high school or oh. elementary school, whatever. Um, so the jocks, uh, give me an anthem for jocks. Concussions. <laughs> Hug me to the ground. <laughs> Catch these feelings. <laughs> uh, I want to hear hug me to the ground, <laughs> please. Oh! <laughs> My dad don't touch me with affection. <laughs> My mom don't say hi no more. <laughs> when I get into the locker room, there's only one thing I'm looking for. I want you to hug me so hard I fall down to the ground. I want you to hug me. Come on, there's no one else around. I want you to hug me until I can't stand up. I want you to hug me. Hey, what's up? Hug me to the ground. Oh, 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 guys, that's not what I asked for. Now hug. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and finally, we're going to get ideas for the anthem of camping. Uh, Zach, or yeah, uh, you know what? Shay, start us off. I'm more of an inside person. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sleeping, but not in a safe way. <laughs> There's poop right there. <laughs> um, Shay, I'd like to hear more about I'm more of an insight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excellent. There's nothing that I like more than Wi-Fi, and I can't find that outside. Mosquitoes love my blood. Xavier, that should hit all of the points of your life. 
I, I understand if you want to update your Facebook profile now. I feel like You're we welcome. all know Xavier really well now. Right, right. I, I'm on a first name basis with them. So it's pretty cool. All right, oh, oh, it was brought to our attention that we have someone celebrating something special tonight. Um, someone is celebrating a birthday. Woo! Yes, woo! Who is that? Malia. Hi. Malia, it is your yeah. birthday? Yeah. Oh my Hi. gosh. Okay, uh, just, just to clarify, there are no other birthdays in here. The, it's your birthday too? Correct. What is your name? Correct. Monica. Monica and Malia, double M's? Are you kidding me? <laughs> and Xavier's plus one? That's right. Mackenzie. No way! Oh! <laughs> okay, well, we're going to have to do the something special. The stars have aligned. Okay, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do something special for Malaya and... Wait, Malaya? Malia. Malia. Malia and... Malaria. Monica. Monica and Mackenzie. Okay. All right, guys. <coughs> Calvin. Yes. Very good. <laughs> you, I mean, you guys, miracles happen in Utah. You see that? Three M's celebrate a birthday in the same day? It's amazing. Um, I felt the spirit. <laughs> We, you guys are not only privileged to be in the presence of Mali, Malaya, Malia, 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 and Monica and Mackenzie. Not only are you guys all part of that thing that just happened, um, but you are in the presence of experts up here. These are the leading experts in, um, on, maybe up here. Or, or no, this whole side. I'm just going to open up this whole side. What is something that you normally wouldn't see an expert in? A topic. And oh, opening cans. <laughs> Gar garlic bread. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you are in the presence of the three leading garlic bread experts in the entire world. That includes the United States. Okay. Um, and they're going to tell you all about garlic bread. Now, with this, with this particular game that we're playing, whoever's talking up here, if they do make any type of mistakes, um, someone in the back can raise their hand and say, I object. Right? And they will then try to correct what's, what uh, has gone astray. And I will either sustain their objection and they will come forward, or I will overrule them and the person talking will continue to talk. Um, so uh, garlic bread, the leading experts in garlic bread, um, I'm just going to grab this here. Uh, Shay, please tell us all about garlic bread. Garlic bread uh, was invented by uh, people who loved bread and hated vampires. <laughs> and uh, it's, it gives you a certain type of stank breath that um, is bad for kissing, but great for uh, not kissing, uh, you know, <laughs> people from Twilight. Yeah, Zach. It's great for people who love garlic bread. That is true. That is the sole reason it was invented, uh, sustained. <laughs> so everyone's like, oh, you got garlic breath. But what about those of us who are attracted to that? Objection! <laughs> Objection! That yeah. only applies to Zach. <laughs> uh, let me do a quick audience poll. Anyone attracted to garlic breath? Okay, sustained, Shay, <laughs> very good. So Zach's got freaky interests. And, um, <laughs> But he, he did play a big part in the creation of garlic breath. Uh, he wanted to inflict his disgusting pleasures upon the rest of the world. And um, so he said, you know what? Let's pair garlic bread with spaghetti, America's favorite fruit. And Objection. <laughs> yeah, Zach. Sustained. I don't even care what you have to say. Yes, I am a freak. I, there's only one of me in the whole world, but I know what I want. And when you want something, you go for it. And I had the crazy idea of pairing garlic bread with spaghetti, everyone's favorite vegetable. And I said, Objection! Objection! Yes, Sam! 
Not a vegetable. <laughs> that is true. So they tell us what food group spaghetti is from. The spaghetti is, of course, found naturally deep within the earth. Mind, <laughs> mind in the marinara mines of San Diego. <laughs> now, spaghetti mining is a difficult trade. I would know. My family has Objection. long... Objection! Yeah, Shay. It's super duper easy. <laughs> oh, really? Let's hear about it. Sustain. Yeah, anyone can do it. You don't even need a college degree or a trade degree. You can just go down to the mines and find some spaghetti. Again. Objection! Yeah, Zach! Anyone can do it. What about this child? We are not for child labor. <laughs> uh, <yeah>. Objection! <laughs> Child can't child work if it's in an Italian restaurant in his family. Objection. She just misgendered this girl. <laughs> um. Objection. I was just a child when I first started in the mines. <laughs> Sustain Sam. And down in the mines, your most useful tool is your lucky garlic bread loaf. Because what you do is you find the spaghetti Objection. deposits. Yeah, Zach. Your most useful to tool is your wit and your heart. Oh, so true, sustained. <laughs> None of that will work unless you can clever yourself your way through the mines. Because ev in every mine, there's a troll who asks you questions. Objection. Three. That <laughs> troll Sam. ain't my father. <laughs> sustained. Sam, tell us the, ta the tragic tale. That's right. I was there that day when the mighty meatball troll took my father and tore both of his eyes off. Yeah, Shane! I knew Sam's father and he was mean. <laughs> Please, let's shatter Sam's childhood vision of his father. It's his name. And he bullied me when I was just a kid. He would always say, hey, four eyes. And Objection! I yeah, Zach! I know Sam's father because huh, I'm him, idiot. <laughs> Seconds. My boy, I was... Objection! Objection! <laughs> yeah, Sam! Dad never let me talk as a child. It's my turn! Yeah! Yes, Sam's a stay! Yeah! You were never there Objection! for me! I had to take care Sam's of mom! Sam's are meant to be seen and not heard. Back in the mines! Overruled! Let's let this child have yes. his voice! <laughs> I had to take care of mom and all of my ten siblings all by myself! Where were you, Dad? So I, I was in the the, Alf, the Alfredo cartel. <laughs> and see! <laughs> you are all now wiser. Uh, awesome. We're gonna we're gonna wrap up this uh, the first half of our show with a staple we have here at Improv Broadway. This is called For Your Consideration. Now, before we jump into that game, um, I'm going to prep you for what to do during our intermission. First off, um, if you need to uh, consume snacks or uh, drinks or whatever, we have a concession stand just out here to the left. Your it's the right, yeah. I went to Spanish, I went to Spanish Fork High School. <laughs> so just out these curtains to the right, we have concessions. They're absolutely free with a mandatory donation. And then if you need to uh, use the, do the opposite of put things into your body, you can come this way to the restrooms. We have uh, two different styles back there. Um, it's very fun. Uh, <laughs> lastly, what I need you to do is, I mentioned we're going to be performing a fully improvised musical for the last half of our show. What I need you to do is go on to Instagram, go to Improv Broadway, go ahead and give us a follow. And then on the last post that we've made, you should see all of our faces on there. Um, I want you to comment the name of a musical that has never existed. Not a sequel to a musical that you know of, not a parody of a musical that you know. Uh, come up with something original. If we select your musical to perform, not only will you get to see your brain baby be birthed out of an improv bass drum um, this evening, but we will give you two free tickets to come to a future show. Okay? So is that something you guys can do for us? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> um, over here, I asked you guys about jobs, um, but I didn't ask you guys over here. Um, who feels they have a very interesting job? Uh, yeah. Um, I work in animal care for uh, lab animals. Uh, animal care for lab animals. Yeah, rats and mice. For, for rats and mice. So you care for them? 
In preparation. <laughs> so like, Dumbledore. <laughs> Sweet! Uh, and then, uh, so you, okay, so you animal care, and then back behind. Uh, I work with props in theater. Props in theater. Oh, okay. In preparation for performance. <laughs> like Dumbledore. Like, just like, well, like Severus Snape. He was a really good, anyway, okay, very good. Um, let's, do, uh, let's do animal care. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. animal care. Um, it, if you think about like your day-to-day -day, uh, life as an animal care professional, how would you describe your day in maybe a three to four words? Okay, cleaning, card scanning, cute baby mice. All right. Okay, very good. Guten Tag and welcome to Germany's favorite musical. So I'm Hans. Hi, I'm Derek. <laughs> Derek is a transfer from our American studio sister station. How are you doing, Derek? I'm doing so good. Oh. Uh, I'm doing much, much better. You look better. Look at you. Yeah, thank you. Taking the, in the German sun. Yeah. Taking it, well, I am only wearing half a shirt right now. You can see that well, my, my chest is totally exposed, so exposed on camera. Look at you, like a cute little lab mouse. Whoa! Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Don't really get much of that in the States. No. <laughs> we have fun because we're familiar with each other. <laughs> Speaking of it, <laughs> speaking of it. Yeah, speaking of being familiar. Yeah. You all are pretty familiar with this program and what we do. We like to talk about musicals, musicals. that are sweeping the world. Musicals, in other words, plays with songs. Yeah, sing, sing songy plays. Yeah. Yeah, that is what my mama calls them, sing-songy plays. <laughs> and there's one that my mama, she plays all the time on the records. Mm. It is, uh, I, what is the translation from German into English? Well, why don't you, why don't you say it in German and then I'll translate. Uh, I would, but my human tongue cannot make the pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know about in Germany, but in, in the United States, we have referred to this musical as cleaning, card scanning, cute baby mice. Oh, that's such a botched translation. I think in German, it's just like one loud grunt sound. No, it's more or less. But, <laughs> but it is about the people who are really doing the most for science and scientific progress, and that is the people who take care of the little animals who we do bad things to. <laughs> uh, it's a necessary, it's a necessary uh, con convenience that is provided to animals. You Americans and your justification of right. the horrors of war. <laughs> uh, I, I just really appreciate how smooth and silky my hair can be, and I'm glad that they didn't have to test it on any type of really cute human babies. Yeah, yeah, we thank, Alger we, we thank Algernon for her sacrifice. Uh, this is, I mean, this musical has, has started a resurgence because it's now on its 25th anniversary, 25th and so it's starting, to, it's starting to tour the world duh, again, so which, is, which is why you know, you invited me onto the show so that we could talk about it, so we could introduce it to a brand new, uh, brand new audience, audience that has maybe never seen this so, musical before. And you're missing out because it has everything. It has passion. Mm -hmm. It has romance. It has a little mouse man played by a human person. Uh, it's got a lot of suspense. Yeah, a lot of duh, suspense. Duh. Uh, we begin the show with our, who else, but the protagonist, who is so excited to take care of little animals in the lab. Yeah, uh, she's, she's just the most bubbly person you bubbly. can think of. Uh, bobbly? Bo bobbly, yeah. Pop, pop, pop. Oh. <laughs> the most pop, pop, pop person you can, uh, you can imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole world is laid out before her. She has no idea what she's prepping these animals for. She just knows that she's taking care of them, bless her heart. Duh. And so she sings this song, and it's beautiful, and it's called, I Just Want to Love Them All. <laughs> Let's go ahead and give it a listen. <laughs> Wow, I can't 
can't believe it. By the way, I'm a her, not a him. I'm just grateful to work in this mice laboratory in the city of Nim. How you doing, little guy? With a cane with a ruby on it. I can't wait to take care of you, nothing else. I just have to be honest. Let me look at the schedule for today. Oh crap, that's so scary. <laughs> We're supposed to inject you with human mind fluids. It'll cause you existential crises. I don't know if I can do it. I swore the Hippocratic Oath when I became a tech. And if I abuse these animals, I think I am doomed to go to hell. I'll protect these animals with my lives. I will make sure this male rat has 27 wives. I'll protect these animals with my life. This I swear and I'll never. You may have heard of the Hippocratic Oath, <laughs> which, is where you, which is where you swear to not do harm to humans. <laughs> the Hippocratic Oath <laughs> is for animals. <laughs> That's very true. Um, it's really interesting because the way that this was originally marketed, people yeah. had no idea it was a prequel to the famous Don Bluth film, The Secret of Nim. <laughs> Based on the children's novel, The Rats of Nim. Exactly. We're learning. <laughs> <laughs> so we, yeah. we just get a very uh, a, a glimpse of this, this young girl's inner turmoil that she's going through um, and she she comes against uh, she comes against a uh, you know someone that's maybe a little unexpected a little unexpected a little mouse maybe mm. <laughs> that's right one day a little mouse talks to her and says help I talk like a human now I don't <laughs> like this <laughs> I have all these human fears all these human issues now human desires as well <laughs> and you're looking pretty good. Yes. <laughs> the rat, the mouse, has fallen in love with a human. How tragic. <laughs> and it, you, you'd think it would be kind of awkward, like this whole romance that's going on, but as you mentioned, the mouse is played by a fully grown human in a mouse costume. Duh, so because like, until now, we have yet to find the mouse that is a triple threat. <laughs> <laughs> So it's really interesting because you have to kind of use your imagination that the person in the costume is actually mouse size, but it gets really hard when they start doing like ballroom dancing and, and lifting and tap dancing uh, and then uh, doing an arm wrestle with the little girl and like just totally flipping her over. The choreographer went insane and was institutionalized after the show, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and because he's relatively new to the whole human experience, he doesn't really know what emotions he's feeling. So uh, he's, his tone of voice is very off. He could be talking, he's singing very romantically, but he's using very harsh words. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and, you know, all sorts of weird dichotomies that are going on throughout this song. In this beautiful, stirring look into a mouse's psyche, Am I a mouse or a man? <laughs>
That song is very reminiscent of how me and my wife met and started playing. Well, there you yes. told us about how she took a giant ring and stuck it around Just the right, body. Yeah, it's, uh, you, can, you can see the indent right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You Americans and your customs. <laughs> but of course, all good things must come to an end when the lab finds out that the lab lady has fallen in love with a mouse, which is a huge no-no. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's written right there. It's like the number one rule. It's such a problem. Lab technicians keep falling in love with the mice. They're so, they're so charismatic. And uh, this is where the, the scanning cards, the, the scanning cards really comes into You're it. Because you thought we forgot, but we no, didn't. No. <laughs> Cute baby mice is the sequel uh, to this. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> no, 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 no. Go on, go on. Continue. Speak out truth. <laughs> they get married at the end. Yes. But I'm not going to spoil the rest of it. Uh, the, 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 really, the, the apex of this entire musical is the escape plan. Duh, duh. Uh, you know, the, our, our bubbly protagonist and um, Jonathan Brisby, the tiny little mouse, mm -hmm. um, they, <laughs> they hatch a plan to escape from the lab mm -hmm. uh, with, with themselves and their dignity intact. Duh. Duh, and leave all the other mice to die. Yeah. <laughs> because the only way to escape is by setting the lab on fire. That's also written in the rules. <laughs> um, and so as, as they have... <laughs> as they've prepared to uh, make their grand and very dark escape, um, they're, they're talking about the things that they, they're looking forward to on the outside world as uh, mouse man and wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, and watch closely. You may see how this musical inspired a very popular Pixar film. In this closing number, <laughs> let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Sweetheart, I can't wait. Can you imagine the two of us in Morocco? <laughs> yeah. We only need one airfare ticket. <laughs> you in the middle seat and me in your front pocket grossing the other passengers out. Uh, we'll have the whole first class to ourselves. So, what are you doing over here? It's just a little gasoline. Oh, and what's that for? Well, you know the Hipparatic Oath. <laughs> I swear to cause no harm to hare, fowl, beast, or fish, unless I need to escape a lab, in which case the only way, set her on fire. But, but th those are my brothers and sisters. <laughs> are you really sure you want to do that? And your ex-wife, I think, if you're really <laughs> Jonathan Brisby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My ex wives. That's right, you're the one I hooked up with. I mean, the other people I. Yeah. Or the first song. I'm a polygamous rat. You gave me that, and now you doth take it away. You gave me wives, and now you want to be my wife, and I have to decide if I'll stay. All your words gave me the words you've sung. You've got 27. Wives you like when I bring them young. That for you is what I do. But baby rat, I still love you. I never like family anyway. And laws get so complicated. So set up on fire, man. It's time to go to the promise. Do in my head. 
just someone who could help me know what to do me. I wish that someone would take over my gratitude. <laughs> to burn, especially me and you. What, what do you do? I don't oh, wow. usually. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't usually like to mix a work and, and my romance life, but uh, what, what do you say? I'm your boss and, and your lover. <laughs> that power dynamic is a-okay by me. <laughs> to do with these hands. I know what to do with these hands. It's to give these mice a plan. Take them with us. <laughs> <laughs> All your wives first. <laughs> Nicodemus, the others. <laughs> It's like Noah's Ark, but just for mice. <laughs> Hop on, baby. Okay. We're all going to Morocco. <laughs>
intermission. <laughs> Who's happy to see us back out here? Yeah! Ah, that's all the validation I need. Speaking of validation, hit it. Was that a stopper? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have given us a true gift this evening. You've come here and given us your attention, your applause, your cheers, your woos. <laughs> You've given us your dreams, something you haven't given us to us yet, something you haven't given to us quite yet. It's your money. <laughs> How does one remedy that? I hear people muttering, yes. Shh. Silence. You don't have to. You don't have to worry in vain. I'll tell you. Out in the the entryway there, we have Venmo. We also accept cold, hard currency. You can drop it in a jar. All of the tips that you give us this evening will go to the performers, so that we can just, so that we can justify leaving our families and driving at least 15 minutes to get to a theater so that we can do make-believe in front of all of you, inviting you into our brain space where we all share a common love for the arts and beauty and this country that some of us live in. So please, with all the patriotism, happened. I've been doing this for 10 years. <laughs> that was super fun. We uh, just got a tip right now. What? Yeah. That's never happened in 10 years. <laughs> so amazing. Uh, thank you so much for your suggestions. We had so much fun reading through them. We have decided uh, on two of them, and we want you guys to vote for the ones that you guys would like to see. Uh, so you can really see we're not make, we're not like scripting anything because we have no idea what you're going to vote for. Um, so Sam <coughs> is going to be representing the musical submitted by Lil K. Ricks. Lil K. Lil K. Ricks. Right there, Lil K. Ricks. Okay, very good. Law and Ogre. <laughs> and then representing the musical submitted by McKenna McGrew is Birth. <laughs> So, I need you guys, you get one very loud woo to vote on which musical you would like to see. As I hold my hand over their head, remember this is Law and Ogre and Birth. Uh, I want you to give me the woo for the musical you would like to see. Law and Ogre. Very good. And Birth. Uh, where's my, where's my, my M birthdays? McKay, Myla, Mish. <laughs> Malia. Melanin, what is it? Okay, okay, Melanea. And then, uh, Monica and, Mc, uh. Mackenzie. Mackenzie, right. Okay, I want you guys, just you guys to woo. Okay, you get one woo. You ready? Okay, Law and Ogre. Oh, that was too And Birth. Nice. Very good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much for your woos. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the opening and closing night of LaKay Rick's Law and Ogre.
you got to talk into the phone. I don't get a chair. <laughs> Tell one of the guards, they'll, they'll bring you one. No. <laughs> so that's how it works. <laughs> Look, I didn't want to take this case, but it's a family favor. I really appreciate <laughs> This is very, very thick bulletproof glass. <laughs> You're in the top maximum prison in Ogre Kingdom. You're dangerous. You slaughtered an entire country? Allegedly. Your fingerprints are all over that country. It's an open shut case. There's no way I'd be able to defend someone as despicable as you. Won't you, tr won't you try? Okay. <laughs> I'm listening. Look, I know it looks bad because my fingerprints are all over that country. And the, the giant footprint totally matches the exact footprint that I have attached to my foot. Yeah. <laughs> and sure, there's some, some discarded warts that were found. And yeah, maybe they match the DNA that's linked into my body. But. I didn't do it. You're winning me over every second, Kragnar. Your mom wanted me to give you this. Dad's obituary. <laughs> he, he, he was in that country. <laughs> you, the fact that you don't know that makes me wonder if is this the case of a lifetime? Of a lifetime? I thought that every case was over. I thought that there was no more challenges left for this ogre. You've got a DNA and a written confession by you and a hundred thousand eyewitnesses who all pointed at you. They've got your dental records and also videotape and they also have your mom who said you did it then switched. But I believe you, Kragnar. When I look in your eyes six feet away, I see something I haven't seen in a long time. Hope. We gotta build a case. We gotta start from the ground floor. Yes. We gotta give you an alibi, or maybe even something more. Maybe you did it in self-defense. Maybe you murdered them in self-defense. I mean, those two million people were holding a gun. I don't care what it takes. I'm gonna give you your big break. I'll defend you till my last ogre breath. We're gonna take this all the way to the Supreme Ogre Court if we have to. You really mean that? So you'll take the case? I have already taken it. <laughs> you, but to make it official, you have to pay me. Give me a dollar. light. You're not, you may not like my tactics, Kragnar, but you'll like my results. I just want my name cleared. And I want justice for those two million people slaughtered. <laughs> By having them not pin it on you, Kragnar. I took the ogreatic oath. <laughs> <laughs> that I'd never see an innocent ogre in there. 
Shake on it. That's good enough. Well, well, well. Look what crawled out of the public defender pond. <laughs> you reek of the middle class. <laughs> and low. That's right, I'm a middle class defense attorney. Well, well. Public defense attorney. You know when they say you have the right to remain silent. If you don't have a lawyer, you will be afforded one. If you can't afford one, you won't get this guy. If you can't afford one but don't want to pay, this is the guy for you. <laughs> That's me. Well, as the DA taking over this case, I'm here to hear your offers. And as the Judge Bloody of this here courtroom... All I'm... hail! All hail! All hail! Cut to you, fool! <laughs> Forgi I... Forgive me, Judge Bloody, I forgot myself. I did my curtsying before you arrived! <laughs> and oh, hey, curts as well. I'm here to say order, order, shut your trap. Now continue. It's all very legal, I assure you. <laughs> <laughs> you are here, of course, to plead guilty, make a deal of some kind, maybe get him off for good behavior in 20 years. No. Perhaps flirt with a judge older than your grandmama. <laughs> judge Bloody. I Perhaps some favors. <laughs> I did my flirting before you arrived. <laughs> You've got to keep up. <laughs> well, I, I had some ideas for offers, but I kind of want to explore this a little bit. <laughs> Judge Bloody. Oh, uh... stay behind the uh, high chair, please. <laughs> stay behind. <laughs> I These public defenders have no class. <laughs> no class. No class at all. Look, the evidence is airtight. We have a confession. And as if that were enough, we have DNA evidence. We have his mother's testimony. We have blood taken from the scene of the crime. And we have a dirty judge who will say he's guilty no matter what. <laughs> you know, ogres and how they like their filth. But isn't the overwhelming evidence evidence of foul play? Yes, his own. What, what, what? <laughs> his own foul play. Oh, I thought you just said his o like that's a thing. his o Why? <laughs> and I'll have you know that as district attorney, I've never lost a case. Evidence is stacked. My gun is on that rack. And once he's found guilty of the crime, I'll take my right and take his life in my hands. He's house. never lost a case. Never lost a case. He's never lost a case. No, no. So just plead guilty and take your punishment. You don't want to see how low I'll go. Cause I've never lost a case. He's never lost a case. He's never lost a case. No, no. I know that it's tough with the DA and her. Especially when you are judge, jury, executioner. I've never won a case, but I think this is my first because I think the evidence shows that this is the worst. In this court of law, if you lose for your client, you will get the death sentence. I it's, it's 
the newest thing. Because <laughs> oh, I just said I lost every case before this, but this is a new law. This is a new law. <laughs> Judge, jury, legislature? <laughs> It's a tough time in the ogre kingdom. <laughs> That's right. And you two, you have beef at being brothers, don't you? Yes. I've never lost a case. <laughs> never <laughs> lost a case. <laughs> you have always <laughs> lost your case. No, He's no. never <laughs> lost a case. That's right. Your first case was the custody battle between our parents. You got them 100%. That's I got right. sent to the orphanage. <laughs> about to die. Um, unfortunately, I already satisfied her before you came in. I don't, I don't want to talk about that anymore. He's never lost a case. You always lost a case. He's never, never lost a case. No, 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 never, 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 So come with me your case. Give me 24 hours. That's when the trial begins. got to get me out of here. <laughs> I know we can do it. it Jirak, he's... He's kind of like a brother to me. I, we grew up in the orphanage together. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, if that... If for some reason he can't get me out, I've been digging this hole. <laughs> that will never work. <laughs> what do you know, skinny fleet? <laughs> well, I've been watching you for quite some time. Narrating your every move. There, a prisoner, alone, cold, desperate, digs a hole. My name is Ogerman Freeman. <laughs> Ironic, last name Freeman, in prison. I just been calling you Skinny Fleet. You assume too much. I do. <laughs> but you know, one assumption that really is going to hold water is I'm getting out of here. Trials in less than 24 hours. And whether I'm walking out of that courtroom because my adopted orphanage quasi-brother <laughs> finds a way to prove me innocent, although the evidence is very damning. Lang or language. <laughs> The evidence is very danging. <laughs> Even if you do escape, who will take you back? Your mother who turned you in and sent you to an orphanage? <laughs> a lot of things I haven't worked out yet. No, I... I just want to be free Feel the grass beneath my feet And know whole entire countries I want to be free I'll get there by heck or high water I'll get there no matter the cost 
If I don't walk outside, then I will go into this hole that I have made. It's only three feet inside, so I'll hide inside, and I continue to dig until I'm outside. You can sit there, skinny fleet, and you can judge me all day. I am judging you. Why would you spend time digging a hole when you could be figuring out who framed you for the murder of a whole country? <laughs> You're right. Who hates you so much they would murder two million people and your father, who also sent you to an orphanage? <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Sounds about right. I'm gonna let my lawyer know. Look into my mom. What? But why would your mother hate you so much, Cragnar? You seem like a lovable, down-to-earth ogre. <laughs> We have a lot of traditions in ogre culture. I know. <laughs> I didn't flirt enough with my mom. <laughs> I didn't curtsy when I got home from school. So naturally I drew the ire of the person that birthed me. To the point where she would destroy an entire country and pin it on me. I love where so that this is me going. or my lawyer would be killed. That's right, all ogre women are scarlet ladies. <laughs> That's true. A heck have no fury like a scorned ogre woman. <laughs> What would you, what would you have me do, Skinny Fleek? I'd have you win. I'd have you leave. <laughs> you can't touch me, cause I've never truly been here. Oven set. Oh my, yes. <laughs> An ogre pie. <laughs> For a son who's never coming back. <laughs> Nothing to do but wait now. Oh, my old bones. <laughs> Knitting. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I hold pin the needles. <laughs> he should have flirted with me more. <laughs> <laughs> is our custom. <laughs> he should have curtsied more. But instead he disrespected Mama. And so he became the full guy. Oh yes. Those lousy 
Viking gnomes never saw it coming. It was so easy to slaughter an entire nation of gnomes. There were thousands of them, but they're so small. All I had to do was walk through their tiny gnome kingdom and kick them aside as I pleased. <laughs> but Derek, my treasonous husband, <laughs> he said, no, don't slaughter the gnome, so I killed him too. <laughs> and of course I left DNA all over the place. How could I not? I sweat profusely. <laughs> and who else is an exact match for my DNA but my son? Because they'd never suspect the ogre queen. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that needs a take two or you uh, take one wonder? <laughs> Click, record. Well, well, well. If it isn't the public defender. Middle defend class public defender. <laughs> the worst kind. <laughs> well, we're not going. We're not going to get this started until you start it properly. Flirt with me. <laughs> <laughs> my oh my, your tusks are looking mighty fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. That will do. That will do. <laughs> I got all that on tape, Mrs. Ogre. Queen Ogre, if you please. Who, who gave you that title? <laughs> My mother when she died. Royalty? Yes. Oh no. You, you wouldn't know because I disowned my son and put him in a orphanage. But I am the Goga Queen. You see, the gnomes were encroaching on our land, and we needed their natural resources for our own. Their precious maple syrups. But the voters would never support a queen who killed. Oh no. Everyone knows that when an elected official commits crimes in office, they're completely scot-free. <laughs> Everyone knows easy. that rule. And it goes double when you're an unelected official like a queen. <laughs> <laughs> this tape means nothing. You would condemn your own son? We gave up the deal. He'll, he'll get the... He'll, he'll get the drowning for sure. The only way to kill an ogre for sure. <laughs> Listen, I... Yes? I grew up with your son in the orphanage, oh. I think. <laughs> yep, that was me. <laughs> He's a good boy. He's a good boy and he, he wondered every night, where's papa, where's mama? Why didn't they love me? Why didn't they want me for me? And I had to be the one to tuck him in every night. I may not be a queen. I may not even be a high class public defender, but I was more of a parent to that kid than you ever were. I may not be his father, but I'm also not his daddy. <laughs> And shame on you for allowing another orphan to have to do that. <laughs> Consider me rebuffed. I guess we'll see you at sentencing.
All right. I did my curtsying before. That's why I am over here and you are over there, a lowly public defender. The rouge on your snout looks very enticing. I can smell you from here. I'm blushing. Your, Your honor. honor. My sweet. <laughs> Go on. Who? <laughs> I never know where we are, you and I. You keep me guessing. I refuse labels. <laughs> I'll go first. <laughs> Your Honor! Ogres of the Jurel! <laughs> what you have before you is an open and shot case. This ogre willingly, knowingly, lethally walked through the gnome kingdom, slaughtering the tiny little defenseless peoples. <laughs> as he went, not caring who or why he hurt, only that he hurt them. He left evidence. He confessed. Let's just, let's dunk him. <laughs> the kiddie pool has been filled. The water is nigh two feet deep. More than enough to fill his lungs. <laughs> the prosecution rests. Your Honor. Lady Ogres and Gentle Ogres. It wouldn't matter if I had a recording of the Queen confessing to these <laughs> war crimes. It wouldn't matter if I could prove without a shadow of a doubt that my defendant here didn't do any of that. And it was done by his rotten mom who sent him to the orphanage. I still am not sure why. <laughs> I think she just kind of didn't like him. It just has sort of a general vibe of jerkery. But none of those things will hold up in court. And so I'd like to call my last surprise witness. <gasps> myself. <gasps> One question. Objection, Your Honor. This is most unorthodox. Your Honor. Uh, oh, Baruch. <laughs> Rolls like the ocean. <laughs> Myself, who committed those crimes? It was me. <gasps> I did it. I did it all. Dunk me instead. Guilty! You are sentenced to drowning in my eyes no. for the rest of your life. Turek, you, you, you can't do this. Kragnar, listen, you have a life to live. You know who your mother and father is. And even though they're real bad. Terrible. I never knew who mine were, and so I have nothing to live for. I've never won a case in my life. And this is the only way I think I know how. Dunk me. Dunk me, dunk me fast. Dunk me. Dunk me till I pass. Dunk me. Dunk me in the pond. Dunk me. Dunk me till I'm gone. Take your shirt off first. <laughs> We find myself at a conundrum of the brothers. This is the one who, as a child, I tried to smother. I took him away from our father and our mother. Now he wants me to take his life. On the one hand, is it ethical to do this? <laughs> On the second hand, do I really care? <laughs> I've never taken a life without my gun. When did we switch to drowning instead? <laughs> the continuity of Dunk. my mind is Dunk. unraveling. Dunk. 
Duncan. Who I do I hate? My brother at home. John Duncan. John Duncan. Is it because he always been told? Duncan. Duncan. And he's always made me feel this way. Jarek, I told you I wanted to be free, but you've always been a brother slash father to me. You can come and I'll jump and say. drown the queen and or the, the the judge and DA that makes you queen you're I'm above gonna... you're above all the laws and the rules Jarek we got to go visit my mom I'm already here <laughs> I saw what you did to the DA and the judge and it was tight. <laughs> I've never been more proud of my ogre son. Here. <laughs> Take it. You're the queen now. I know, Mom. I just gotta tell you something. Slimic. You have no son. What? <laughs> <laughs> Just say you won your first case. Tragnard, I'm sorry, I I took the hipper ogre earth. I I've gotta turn you in, queen or not. This is cold-blooded murder. And if once I walk out of here, I'm I have to pin all this on you. I understand. I'm just glad you do. What are you doing? Once you walk out of here. Oh! is the story of how our great Queen Ragnar came into power in the year 1312. 